Good day everyone! In this video, we will discuss about the inverse of one-to-one -one function. In the previous video, we have discussed that to be able to determine the inverse of the function denoted by f raised to negative 1, we need to reverse the domain and the range of the given function. Also, the properties of an inverse of a function are the following. If the inverse of a function is 1 to 1, then the function is also 1 to 1. Second, the domain of the inverse of a function is equal to the range of the function. And finally, the range of the inverse of a function is equal to the domain of the function. Finally, we have also discussed on how to determine the inverse of a function given a set of ordered pairs. This time, let us discuss how to find the inverse of a function given the equation. These are the steps that we need to remember. First, we need to replace f of x with y. Next step, interchange x and y. Next, solve for the new y from the equation in step 2. And finally, replace the new y with inverse of f of x if the inverse is a function. Let us consider this example. Given f of x equals x plus 2, find the inverse of the function. Following the presented steps earlier, first, we need to express f of x to y. Therefore, we will have y equals x plus 2. Next step, interchange x and y. So we will make y as x and x as y. Therefore, it will become x equals y plus 2. After that, we need to solve for y in this new equation. To do that, we need to isolate y on one side of the equation. Since we have 2 here, we need to write 2 on the other side of the equation, giving us with x minus 2 equals y. By reflexive property, we can write this equation as y equals x minus 2. Finally, let us replace y with inverse of f of x. Therefore, the inverse of the given is x minus 2. Let us have another example. Given f of x equals 5x minus 7, find the inverse of the function. Again, for the first step, let us set f of x into y. So we will have y equals 5x minus 7. Next step, interchange y and x. So we will have x equals 5y minus 7. Next, solve for y in this new equation. So what we need to do first is to isolate the term with y on one side of our equation. Writing negative 7 on the other side of the equation, it will become positive 7. So we will have x plus 7 equals 5y. By reflexive property, we can write this equation as 5y equals x plus 7. Notice that we have a numerical coefficient on y not equal to 1. If this is the case, we need to divide the whole equation by that numerical coefficient. 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1. So therefore, we will have y equals 
x plus 7 over 5. Finally, set y as the inverse of the function. So, the inverse of the function is x plus 7 all over 5. For our last example, given f of x is equal to 5x minus 3 all over 7, let us find the inverse of the function. So once again, let us set f of x to y. y equals 5x minus 3 all over 7. Next, interchange y and x. So we will have x equals 5y minus 3 all over 7. From here, we need to solve for y in this new equation. But since we have a denominator here, we need to eliminate the denominator by multiplying the whole equation by it. So we will have 7x equals 5y minus 3. Next, let us isolate the term with y. So let us write negative 3 on the other side of the equation, giving us with 7x plus 3 equals 5y. Once again, by reflexive property, we can write the equation 5y equals 7x plus 3. Since the numerical coefficient of y is not equal to 1, we need to eliminate it by dividing the whole equation by that numerical coefficient. So we need to divide both sides of the equation by 5. So 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1. So we will have y equals 7x plus 3 all over 5. Finally, write y as inverse of the function. So the inverse of the function, f of x is equal to 7x plus 3 all over 5. Note that given a function and its inverse, the following property is applicable. If g of x is an inverse of f of x, then f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x is equal to x. Meaning, if we will solve for the compositions of the function and its inverse, then the result is both equal to x. We can use this property in verifying if two functions are inverses of each other. For example, solve that the given functions are inverses of each other. f of x is equal to x minus 3 and g of x is equal to x plus 3. To determine that they are inverses of each other, then we need to verify that f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x is also equal to x. To do that, we need to recall the steps in doing composition of functions. For f of g of x, we need to substitute the entire g of x to the x of f of x. Hence, we will have x plus 3 minus 3. Simplifying this, it will give us x plus 3 minus 3. Finally, positive 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. So we will have here x. Therefore, we can easily see that f of g of x is equal to x. So the first one is being satisfied. For the second one, g of f of x, what we need to do is to substitute f of x to the x of g of x. So we will have x minus 3 plus 3. Simplifying this, we will have x minus 3 plus 3 and negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So finally, we will have here x. So once again, 
g of f of x is also equal to x. Since both of the compositions of functions were being satisfied, then we can say that f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Let us have another example. Show that the given functions are inverses of each other. Given that f of x is equal to 3x plus 5 and g of x is equal to x minus 5 over 3. So once again, we need to satisfy that f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x is also equal to x. So therefore, for the first one, f of g of x, what we need to do is to substitute g of x to the x of f of x. So we will have 3 times x minus 5 all over 3 plus 5. Here, since we multiply 3 on an expression with the denominator of 3, we can cancel this out since this will become equal to 1. So we will have x minus 5 plus 5. Simplifying x minus 5 plus 5, it will give us x. So therefore, f of g of x is equal to x. The first condition is being satisfied. On the other hand, g of f of x, we need to substitute the entire f of x to the x of g of x. So we're gonna have 3x plus 5 minus 5 all over 3. Simplifying the numerator, positive 5 minus 5 is 0. So we will have 3x divided by 3. And 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. So we have here x. So therefore, g of f of x is equal to x. With this, both the conditions were being satisfied. Therefore, f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. I hope that you have understood the lesson. For the next video, we will discuss about the graphs of inverse functions. Thank you for listening and see you on our next discussion.